Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm JD. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight, as always, socially distanced. We did it before it was mandated or popular. Uh, Ross is in the Northeast. I'm in the Midwest. JD's in Colorado. So we're back mm-hmm. to our usual three different time zones. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's the only way we really do the show. Like when it's like two East Coast guys or two Midwest guys and one East Coast guy, it just feels wrong. It's it's proper when it's three time zones. It's good. Yep. Um, I like it. Yep. Yeah. So thanks for coming back, JD. Hey, thanks <laughs> for having me. <laughs> uh, Ross, do you want to start with your updates? Quick stuff. I'm going to get it out of the way. I still have KO2s. I still have not mounted them on the Lexus. Um, I am considering wheel options and chris i have probably chewed your ear off endlessly about this um the options are those american racing ar172 bahas that my brother was on and talked about uh was that two weeks ago three weeks ago whatever it was uh when Um, this comes out it'll have been two weeks ago yeah so so the you know the the bfgs are 34 by 10 and a half so they recommend a seven to nine inch wide wheel so the sweet spot's obviously dead in the middle that's eight um and those american racing wheels are 17 by eight and they're the right offset um and they actually only weigh like 25 pounds so thinking that might be the way to go um these are the same that are on your brother's truck same exact wheels we yeah for, we might actually be running the same same wheels by the next time we talk about <laughs> this uh um, just different tires because he went toyos <laughs> and you've got ko2s yeah, he went down to stock size Toyos because he, you know, it's his daily um, and he's got, it's a 2022 and he's got 65,000 miles on it by the time the show comes out. So he, you know, <laughs> pounds the shit out of it. Um, does some driving. He does a bit of driving. Yes. Uh, yeah. So trying to make a decision on wheels, uh, you know, wheel pros has been super kind about offering those at, at cost. Um, and then uh, Dustin at FN Wheels, which is a pretty well-known company for the Toyota stuff, uh, has you know extended an offer to for uh, what are called the FX Pro. They look kind of well, not kind of they they're uh, pseudo replicas of the OEM TRD Pro wheels. So trying to just uh, make a a call on on what look to go with because they're very very different. And ultimately, it's you know different means to the same end, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll get there when we get there. Um, might have a trip with the Lexus this coming Saturday, actually, into the Woo-hoo. into the woods. Yeah, so Chris will talk, but I'm asking the guys if they want to record a quick like 20 minute show from where oh, our lunch spot is. Um, Absolutely, yes. One of the guys in our group, John, has got a new new rig. He's got it. He Unfortunately, lost his last Tacoma, and now he has a second gen um, twin locked front rear on 35s. So, getting a little a little spicy for the Toyota boys there. But, yeah, I say that's yeah. that's close yeah. to the word built. Like, it, it's definitely built. Oh yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, it's a slippery slope because now we got guys talking about flatbeds and you know Matt, who I know listens to this, trays. this show. Trays. They're called trays. Tray. Utility yes. trays. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're turning it into a ute. Um, but yeah, no, Matt, who, who listens to the show and is, is a good friend of mine, he's talking about doing Chevy sixty threes on his third gen Tacoma. So um, I'm I'm watching watching all this go down and thinking about you know. 44 is an armor and I'm happy to pull as much cable as I have to, to keep up. You know, I, I, not on the, the point of, of aftermarket, you know, axles or anything yet, unless like Marlin crawler wants to give me a holler and we can do like, you know, some long travel. So for the listener, that's not super fluent in, in Tacoma world or forerunner world. What the mm-hmm. hell does Chevy 63s mean? That's a good question. Oh Jesus Christ! Um, is it axles? It's not sixty-three inch tires because yeah, those are over no, five feet tall. 60, no, it's it's okay. It's, <laughs> it's the the diffs and it's the monster solid. truck size guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the, the, solid... the clip that cuts out that shows that Chris is an idiot for this. <laughs> AI is going to come in handy for a visualizer on that. Let me look what the era. What gen Chevy? Because when I even when I Google it, like Chevy sixty threes on Forerunner was what Google like auto filled, and so 
the tires all look normal size, which is why I was like, okay, so I'm missing something here. Um, it's got to be axle based, right? It's axle based, but you retain your given. I'm not a Tacoma guy. I don't know leaf springs or anything really about the way that stuff works on on trucks. Um, my understanding is that you retain most of your factory drivetrain, but somehow reconfigure the back end to account for 63 inch travel springs not travel okay. travel's the wrong word um it's it's, it's 88 to 2010 gmc trucks so they're they're bigger okay. longer heavier duty coils is probably i don't know fuck I'm, matt's gonna kill me i'm gonna look i'm gonna while we're talking, is Matt about going this. wheeling this weekend? Make Matt talk about it. Yes, he, he will do. That. <laughs> I'm, I'm texting him right now. Matt, go to the source, Ross. Go to the source. Second explanation of what Chevy 63s are. I have not done my homework, and I apologize to no, everybody. This is where know. this is Thanks. where you can splice in the the response that he sends back to you. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully, we'll get there. Um, anyway, speaking of well, bad decisions. Yeah. Speaking of bad decisions. bad decisions. Actually, this was a good decision. Uh, you know, I've been nerding out on all the RC stuff, and I put yeah. an FJ40 looking body on the Traxxas TRX4M. So now it looks, and, and the audio listeners are, you know, missing out here, but it's a, a very pretty Injura IR40, and it's got new Ooh. wheels and tires, and I'm very happy with it. And that's it. That that works. It looks it just awesome. goes to show has, we're all still children. Dude, seriously, like I'm having as much fun playing with this stuff now as I did when I was a kid. Um there was, and, yeah. It's, <laughs> it, 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 it's funny it you say it like that, like we're all still children. Like that's all yeah. adult men or twelve year old boys still. Like yeah. yeah. There was when I was growing up, I was probably eight, and one of the shops that my dad used to bring his Jeep to, I he bought me a video of uh of these guys off-roading out west and i can't remember the phrase but the opening of the video was somebody commentating over like a whole fleet of built trucks crawl you know rolling into a stream as they entered a trail and it was basically you know you never grow up it's just the size of your toys that change (laughs) you know and i mean it's it's not size because this is the same size as the stuff I played with when I was a kid. It's just more expensive. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> the know? size of a credit card bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, fun stuff. This is this is fun stuff, and I'm going to bring that RC four wheel drive uh, C two X comp crawler thing that I've been talking about on the uh, on the trip this weekend and and break it out during lunch. So that's the four wheel steer wheel one, right? No, that's the the full tenth scale one, the one that's like ten pounds. Oh, okay. Giant, uh, the four wheel steer one is up there, and I need to tinker with it a bit because the which one broke, uh, or did I misread that image? That doesn't narrow it down. You you sent me (laughs) one that looked like it was collapsed on a super body. On a what body? I'm going to share the image because you sent it to yeah, me and I still don't know what you sent me. <laughs> okay. And, I, and just... by the time you do that, oh, so that's a, um, yeah, that's a Traxxas. That's a 116th Traxxas E Revo. Um, I bought it a couple of weeks ago. I played with it once with my brother in the rain. It was 34 degrees and pouring rain and windy. It was horrible. And then on um, this past Saturday night, I went outside and had my headlamp on and was playing with it. Um, and I had gotten a second battery and a splice, like a splitter for it. So it basically like bumps the power and bumps the runtime. And uh, long story short, after about 15 minutes, the back end um, is on the ground and won't come you back. Bl- did you blow a diff or suspension? No, it has inboard suspension and suspension's totally fine. I just, I, I haven't had enough time to play around with it to and, dig and in. see what okay. happens. Okay. It's it's unhappy. And before we proceed, Matt says, you put Chevy leaf springs in. I want to say they are 63 inches eye to eye. So you basically okay. get more more meat on your on your leaf springs. Yeah, 63 inches on a coil would be that tracks, yeah. absurd. So, yeah, let's pretend I never said that sentence out loud. Yeah. Um, thanks, Matt. Because then you're just start getting pictures. 
Yeah, sorry. Six, I, 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 dude, I, I, I thought tall. it was 63 inches tall. So, <laughs> no. if Any somebody person. has a Chevy on 63 inch tires, I would like to see that, by the way. So, I don't, I think 63 <laughs> isn't the size they make. I think no. it goes from 44s to uh, Monster Truck. And what are those? More or less. Yeah. Oh, are... there is a 63 inch tire, but it's a 63 inch. Uh, internal, yeah, internal. The the diameter from the space in the middle is sixty three inches. Oh, the tire is like twelve feet tall. It's those giant dump trucks. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the earth movers. <laughs> yeah, like I found one with humans yeah. in it, but none of them are very uh, large aspect ratios to share. The pictures are the humans. That one's pretty good. Uh, both monster truck tires run from sixty six. Uh, 66 inches. Monster truck tires are 66 inches tall by 43 inches wide. Jesus, pretty damn close. Yeah, 66 by 43. Wow, they're yeah, that I mean, they look almost square stand. So, that tracks, excuse me, salter. I will say, I uh, I get frustrated with social media with people that play with their RC monster trucks and then add V8 noises underneath it. And every time I have to go, wait, is this real Mm -hmm. or not? (laughs) Yeah, the tilt shift. Cinematography yeah, tilt shift because it used just to be audio tilt shift underneath photography. It. I specifically yeah. remember Land Rover the tilt shift ad. I think it was for like the LR4, LR3, and it looked real. It was awesome. But now you can do tilt shift videography. The it best is. tilt shift is from the uh, British TV series Sherlock. The opening credits were all tilt shift video, and it so it looks like somebody playing with model toys really? of London. Yeah, the one with. Oh, with with Benedict uh, Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. Yeah. Martin Freeman would have been the easier name to call out there because yeah. he's in all the series yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, that been, that been. Yes, it's actually it's really good to, to watch. So. Is it? Mm-hmm. It's more fun. No, oh, it's hard to watch without a Netflix account. So I'll watch the intro and get back to you. Yeah, not the, hard, but it's should... impossible. No, say, <laughs> just how much work do you want to put in, Ross? Like, yeah. No, no. Anyways, Chris, you got anything? So. We're going to skip my updates because I have so much that I think I could fill an entire show by myself. And I don't want to take JD's time because he has epic, cool stuff that is on his list here, which is you way better the, than I do. Chris, you could do the Jeff Glucker oh. and, you know, go to Ireland, get hammered, and then ramble for 45 minutes. By myself? Wait, is that by yourself? I would say, like, solo, I just solo. got done watching the, a rugby documentary on, on uh, Netflix. So I feel like I need to go to. UK or it was it's uh what's it called six nations full contact and in the second to last episode my wife and I looked at each other and we're like should we figure out the rules to rugby because <laughs> we just watched I mean six hours of this crap and like it's I interesting got, to watch yeah I got the scoring like in the documentary like the scoring's fairly mm-hmm. straightforward like five their extra points are worth two Damn. and their penalty yeah. kicks are worth three which was kind of weird but like Every time an official was well, involved, I was like, I have no clue who's in the right or the wrong here. <laughs> As an outsider, it is a lot simpler than trying to understand cricket. So, see, I've spent the time to figure out cricket, and that makes sense to me. So, I don't. I, maybe mm-hmm. rugby will make sense too. So, uh, yeah, you'll figure it out. You're one of your my favorite part in cricket is when a score is like three hundred, and the other side <laughs> has yet to bat. <laughs> right. I'm sure they'll make it up in the back. Right. Yeah. Anyways, oh, now, now, now that took me to wrestling tournaments because you got the front side of the bracket and you got the back side of the bracket. And if you're on the back side of the bracket, you had a shitty day. So don't wow, want to be on yeah. the back side of the bracket. I told you I had no idea what you were talking about. You lost <laughs> Are we allowed to more. talk about brackets? Like we're getting close to to that, that time of year. Isn't that like a it is, copyright It is thing? March. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's my team's February. not going to make it. But yeah, we can talk about it. <laughs> the team for the shirt you're wearing? No, this this team just spent two hundred and eighty eight million dollars today. So, they signed a signed a guy for eleven years. <laughs> God damn! I mean, you only that was only like half of it, right? Like that that hoodie. Yeah, the hoodie was definitely well. I, the hoodie was. Is he on the team when the hoodie came out? Yeah, he was on the team when the hoodie came out. So yeah, that was part of it. So, yeah. who's this? Uh, the Royal signed their shortstop named Bobby Witt Jr. to an extension. Mm. So. 
It's oh. it is advertised as an eleven year deal worth two hundred and eighty eight million, but in reality, it's like a seven year deal, and then a bunch of options for the player. And if the player's playing well, he's not going to take those options because he'll make more money on the free market. So, well, allegedly, we Lewis seven. Hamilton uh, just pulled a hundred million dollars a year for Ferrari. So from Ferrari, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Over the weekend, all the all the memes were getting to be pretty funny for Ferrari. And then I saw one that like Red Bulls found a workaround for their uh, wind tunnel penalty. And it was, I don't know which city they were in, but it was a subway, an elevated subway train. And like the fourth car was a car holding a Red Bull F1 car only. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> I was like, I don't think they're getting the correct wind speeds across that yeah. car, but... That's, That's a funny, funny. joke. <laughs> it funny joke. It's just like on top of the the metro in in Chicago. It was like a it was like a half a car, so like it wasn't even even up yeah. in the wind. Like the car in front of it was That's anyway punching a whole forty. Anyways, it was gonna good. Hey, it was gonna good tow. Uh, we're we're gonna have enough F one talk, I'm sure, as my you know frustrations mount. Let's talk wheeling, JD. What you been up to? Why don't you give a. <laughs> A 15 second reintroduction to who you are. That was an amazing segue. I had to give Call you credit me. for that. Yeah. We, we, uh, we are nothing if not good at pretending we're amazing. good at segues. That was a hard left turn, which is, uh, also <laughs> what ended me up in a problem that I have not had my Jeep since July. Oh. Since July? Yeah. So, uh, back in July, I was on my way back from a trail that I was doing an update on and, we get, I mean, we'd had a lot of rain that last summer and we had some rock fall come down and mm -hmm. I had gotten a flat tire I wasn't aware of. And I was, so I was on oh. rim and I thought I was enough high enough over the rocks and mm -hmm. I wasn't, and I had a rock hard. And then that instituted, um, an argument with my insurance company and wow. I argued with them for a few months and then, uh, finally just gave up with them in November and took it to my own shop. So it's been uh, at a place here in Denver and it's actually, I was kind of hoping to pick it up on Friday. And so now it's probably going to be tomorrow or Wednesday. So it's at least, damn. Uh, yeah, new axle, um, new, all new steering in the front. Um, there's a lot of dents underneath that will get repaired in another day. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> someday I'll get a, I got to get some skid plates. <laughs> This sounds like Some you did a handy. whole bunch of a whole bunch of what like the while you're in there kind of stuff. Like, oh, this happened, yeah. so I'm gonna fix this, and then that means I'm gonna fix this. No, well, the axle was definitely the problem. Um, that was the major point of impact. That was the definitely the issue. The insurance company started looking at things like the the gas pan, uh, the gas pan, and I'm like, it's it's a skid plate for the gas can. Like, I, I don't know what you want it to do except take dents. You don't mm -hmm. need to replace it. As long as the gas is, you know, as long as it's not leaking gas, leave it alone. Right. So, um, so yeah, we went back and forth. And like I said, finally I gave up with them. So I, it's, it still cost me a pretty penny to get it back up and running. Um, and they let me do, you know, what I wanted to do with it to put the parts back I wanted to put back on it. I have the lifetime Mopar warranty on that Jeep. Nice. And so I wanted to retain as much of that as the, possible. Um, so the 99 years, 999 thousand nine hundred ninety nine miles one my parents yeah, have that on their wk2 and um, yeah by the time the show comes out there will be another update on <laughs> on that it was yeah it was <laughs> Oof. oh sad jeep is sad said jeep is sad but it's got a lifetime warranty on it doesn't it? i mean i expect this jeep to be sad someday i mean this is a pretty sad shot <laughs> i was pretty sad filming that uh, so what what trip were you what trail are you scouting again rescouting when this happened um so i was out on democrat mountain and i don't think i sent you a link for that one um yeah, i've climbed that one have you let's yeah, there, yeah there's democrat and there's republican and you can climb both really? so yep they're right I, next to each I other did. Democrat, Lincoln, and Brosh all on the same day. Okay, that's uh that's the fourteener. Yes. Oh, nice. Right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So this is uh, not so the there's two. No, you can't drive Come up on the Dems. You know, yeah, so I definitely. A, I had to scramble up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, JD, I'm sorry for making you relive this. This is not our intention. We're just trying. I'm to, fine with it. No, no, no. I'm good stories, with it. You know, I'm close enough to getting it back where I feel I, I feel comfortable talking about it now. Mm -hmm. Like there has been some PTSD. I won't lie. I won't yeah. lie to you at all. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I 
we were, uh, it was coming back from Democrat that I spent all of the first half of 2024 uh, updating 2023 Jeep. Yeah. Um, time doesn't matter. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Time doesn't matter. Nothing. It's, it's whose line is it anyway? Time doesn't matter. And it's all made up anyway. Everything's made up. Yes. Points don't matter. Yep. Um, so I was doing updates for all of the trails that I have on trails off road um, okay. for a whole host of reasons. Some of them I hadn't really done a complete facelift on other than to physically be on them in the past few years. So we just kind of wanted to do a whole swipe through and make sure everything was fresh and up to date because mm -hmm. there was some updates coming for trails off road in 2024 with the Jeep and, yep. um, so they wanted to make, we wanted to make sure all of our content was fresh um, on top of it being up to date. We do a pretty good job of keeping it up to date, but mm -hmm. pictures get old. So yeah, and trails um, change and like the actual trails themselves, the terrain changes, especially up in the mountains and, you know, yeah. closures and, and, you know, assholes making go arounds where they shouldn't change. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and so Saxon mountain, which is one of the other links that I did give you, uh, I was doing an update for that one. And I had to go out there and do it because the sheriff there had called me. They had had a, uh, they we'd had so much rain that they had uh, just been landslides, and the telephone pole had come down. And he just wanted somebody to find out if there was any damage further up the trail. So I went up there and took some images and pictures. And there was only one new rock, but there was a new rock. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's a fun trail, man. Whoa, um, that that's one. Uh... Uh... Make you think about your life choices. Okay, for, yeah, for the, big uh, rock. <laughs> for the people listening, um, imagine a effectively a cliff uh, to the right, <laughs> and effectively a vertical rock wall to the left. Um, yeah, and you're you're not just going flat; you're climbing over what looks like was a landslide. Yeah, there are actually three of those landslides along this about a uh, half a mile long portion of shelf road. Jesus, is that? Oh, man. How? And presumably that little spot you're on in this picture changes. Is that wide enough for Safe? anything wider? <laughs> I wasn't going to put the S word out there. But no, you can say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S uh, word. Is there um, any, can you fit anything wider than a, a Wrangler through there comfortably? No. Um, I, there have been people that have put reports in that they've gotten, you know, a full size Ram through there. I wouldn't try it. It's just way too much. You're going to have to put, um, where you kind of see my door there oh. underneath the rock. Oh, you need to put that guy. You kind of okay. saw my door underneath the rock there. Um, I would expect you'd have to go up on that with your tire. And that's just, that's too hairy for Jesus. me. It's one slip um, and you're going on that rock. One, yeah. Yeah. So One yeah, and of... down below you there is the city of Georgetown, three thousand feet to the lake. Hey, I know where Georgetown is. I've been there. There you go. Yeah, that's a uh, fuck. What movie is it where he's just bouncing down the hill over and over again? <laughs> God, well, movies. and we've we've had they actually had a couple of roads down that hill. Um, and the year two years ago, we went through an issue where the sheriff tried to close it, and he was just kind of trying to advocate for its closure. He doesn't like it for a number of reasons. Um, but the main reasons were there'd been a couple rock falls in the last few years and it made a couple of tight spots where you get too close to the edge and mm -hmm. you get a person who's a little too free or has too much of an edge there. Yeah. Georgetown is right below there. You can see oh, there's 70 down, down there. Very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's <clears> gorgeous. <throat> it's an, it is a gorgeous trail. Um, but the video, the beginning there that you saw where you kind of see that obstacle at, it was raining that day. And I was just doing the update and I had to go up it and then come back down it. And I was just, I was done. I didn't yeah. want to do it anymore. I vowed I didn't want to do it anymore, <laughs> but I still do it. I still like doing that one. Mm -hmm. um, I did it again the following summer. I did not make it there before uh, the incident in July. That's a bummer. So, That's a bummer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all right. You know, it's expensive. I, it'll be stronger now when I get back. So that's the nice part about it is that, you know, it'll have a new, new axle in it, new Dynatrack and, um, you know, new, the only parts that won't be new, um, in terms of the steering and stuff are the actual wheels themselves. So, Ooh, okay. and, closer uh, shot of you coming back across. Uh, and <laughs> continuing with Duratrax after this. Yeah, probably for the time being, um, I have, somebody has been trying to talk me into just going ahead and going to 37s. Um, 
and I might do that when I finally break these particular tires. So yeah. uh, I, I probably got another 10,000, 15,000 miles on these tires. And then that's once that's done, I'll, yeah. uh, I'll see these were the dirt tracks wear really well. That's I put a lot of, you know, daily driver miles on my Jeep mm -hmm. and they have been really good in, the, in reference to just how long they've lasted. Yeah, they, they held up really well on lighter vehicles and it's they hit a cliff. And as you probably know, you know, they're amazing. And then yeah. they're just like, and I'm done. I love oh, yeah, I'm, I might have been sitting for six months. I expect them yeah. to be rotted out and I'm done <laughs> now. So Supposedly, there's a Duratrack RT out now that's a little beefier on the sidewall, which has always been its um, it's point of contention for heavy the two vehicles. flats that i've had from it have been sidewall related yeah. um, and one was in grand junction miles from anywhere and with a broken jack but <laughs> to the tires uh, i will say this about the tire the tire went for uh 13 miles not thir uh, is it thir no three miles not 13 good lord it went for three <laughs> miles on a f on flat i was going you know five miles an hour mm -hmm. but i it did get to somebody who had, was able to help me um but man it was rough it was yeah. rough going because i wasn't expecting to run into anybody it was the middle of grand junction on a weekday mm -hmm. no i was almost at the utah border oh jeez yeah, yeah. That's, that's out there um, wait yeah, that's why it's, you went i just almost utah border back to grand junction on a flat no, no, no. I just went oh, okay. to somebody who could help me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It was just uh, some guy who I never got. Uh, I can't remember. I think his name was Mike. And he, uh, he was leaving his house. And I'm just like, man, do you have a jack? I just need to borrow a jack. And he happened to have, he had a lift and an air hammer. And was like pulling into a discount tire. It was beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Mike's a hero. So, which was nice Jeez. after holding my breath for, you know, the previous hour getting to where I was. So it, Dude, it was, I can it worked feel out. your relief there. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, I, in fun. my soul, I can feel that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the broken yeah. jack was... is terrible. Cause you start to look around and you're like, all right, how can I like back this truck up into something to put a tire? Like, is there a rock I can yeah. just lift the diff on? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, and there's uh, nothing like that where I was at either. It was all, it was, there were some rutted areas and I was kind of thinking, maybe I can get this tire up this way. Mm -hmm. And every time I would try to get it angled such, I was like, nope, this isn't going to work. So, and then you have, you know, I have my wife with me and I'm like, oh, I don't really want, I, I, oh, like no. I, I carry, we, I go out by myself all the time. Mm -hmm. I tell you people, if you're going to go out by yourself, you know, have the means to get yourself rescued. And I did, I had mm -hmm. a satellite messenger. If it came down to it, I would have called for help. Yeah. I was just trying not to use that if I didn't have to. Which one do you carry? Uh, I carry the spot X. Okay. So yeah, those it's, two have come a long way over the last few years now. Yeah, I mean, for the piece, I mean, it's uh, the base price, I think, is like 250 or $300 a, a year. And then you start adding on a couple of different extras like the, you know, the SAR rescue uh, coverage and extra kind of coverage for certain situations. And it starts to make sense if you're doing stuff like I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're going to be out there by yourself, quite frankly, I mean, there's a lot of people that off road and get themselves into this kind of crap and they have no business doing it without any means of rescuing mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah. Yeah, and experience goes a long way to that, but shit still happens. Yeah. I mean, even if you just have uh, the iPhone these days, doesn't the iPhone have a satellite rescue thing that you can press with certain models? Oh, it's got something like that. I don't know what the confines of ha needing, you know, service or anything. Like yeah, that. I'm not an iPhone know. person, so I check your local iPhone, listings. I, yeah. yeah <laughs> I still have a tiny thing. kid, so I'm not either. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Two decks, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, I mean, it's, ma it's big. Um, it, I like, I mean, honestly, I like the Blackberry kind of aspect to it. It's kind of nice yeah. to, for, for the, my, the old person in me. Um, I had the, the smaller person, orange puck, but I wanted the two way messenger. So that's what okay. I got that for. Yeah. So. Oh, shit. Yeah. Make me, I got to remember to charge a whole bunch of shit. I highly recommend it. Yeah, you should always have that with you. I actually have to charge mine now because if I get my Jeep back, I'm going out this weekend. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So, so let's back up. Um, and I just want to like set the stage for uh, everybody who's listening to you for the first time. So, yeah, I'm sorry. You've been off-roading off for a little while. Um, yep. You have a, a, <laughs> an, an extremely bright yellow two-door JK Wrangler that is... Uh, 
hopefully yep, i've been uh, wheeling that thing since 2016 or so yep and so it, eight or nine years this year hopefully a hundred percent back under its own power by the time this show is in people's ears and <laughs> okay. uh and you write for a website called trails off road which um i do which if people haven't explored it it is it's the dream for everybody who sits there and likes to read trip reports because you basically get to live out every trail, you know, that you may or may not ever get a chance to run. Um, and, you know, and you're out there doing a bunch of it in like territory where it's, it's like ideal visuals, you know? Yeah. Um, so what, uh, why don't you take us through a couple of the 2022, 2023 trips you did with it and, and where you've gone. Well, so we kind of looked at Saxon Mountain. Um, I did a lot of work on that one uh, just because it's it's close to, since it's so close to Georgetown, it's real popular with a lot of people um, for a whole host of reasons. I mean, and you get, the fun part about that particular trail is that you get both ends of people. You you get people who leave a trip report on Trails Off-Road saying this, it's the difficulty is too hard. Um, even though it's a five down the middle, like it's, that's too difficult. This isn't really that difficult. I'm like, well, you've got to take into account that you're driving on a shelf road at two to 3000 feet above the city. Um, so it, yeah, that one, that one was fun. Um, uh, most of that area got redone, including the Democrat mountain, um, that ended my day. <laughs> uh, Bard Creek in that area too. All of that area up there, I I love wheeling in that area. So if it had to be a place that I ended it, I, that's it. Um, I think since the last time I saw you guys, uh, we did. Re I did Red Cone for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, Red Cone is a, one of the more famous trails in Colorado. It's it goes up to one of the like, more guys... well known. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I never know because I, I hadn't heard of it until I moved out to Colorado, but I also hadn't done as much uh, yeah, it's wheeling. Like Black Bear, Red Cone, Engineer Pass, those are, you know, add two or three more and you make up the most well-known stuff. Well, and I, I don't know why I, was, I wasn't afraid of this one, but it's the one that you hear about when you first start wheeling. And I was kind of... Uh, uh, <sighs> hesitant to do it by myself so uh, my friend troy hauled out with his uh, his built up uh, jt and we kind of rolled up there and it wasn't it's not nearly as bad as you think it is uh, at least as you've heard uh, if you don't have a problem with high altitude stuff if you don't have a problem with being up at that kind of a, a level mm. it's really nothing different than any other trail it's just there's no margin for error in a lot mm. of places uh, but some of them, like the down, there's some downhill portions where it's real hard to get out of the the valley and the gully that you're in. So I can't imagine, unless you're speeding or doing it late in the year. Uh, so a couple of years ago, there was somebody that did it um, and posted their video to Facebook. They were just sliding down the last hill. And I'm just like, that's just insane to me. Like, that's how you die. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the top of Red Cone. It's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's it's very ure. Um, it is very. Uh, we had. I wish we'd had less clouds that day. But it's one of my things I want to go back and do this summer. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a great place to do drone video though, because you're you're up there and it's just there's no trees to run into anything. What is the of course tree I line just there? To the trees. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. What's, uh, what's the tree line and, and what's the actual top of Redcone? Like thirteen. I think the top of red cone is 128, 12806, if my so, memory serves, uh, which it yeah, usually doesn't. I mean, for us who live almost at sea level, it might as well be. My house is key. at 7,000 feet. Yeah. yeah exactly. My so, house, I think, is probably at there you go. seven. So. Yeah. There you go, Chris. That's the, that's the, uh, the cone, the red and the coneness. And if the cone is just a slide, that is beautiful. And it is rusted red. And so the, that's actually not too terrible. It doesn't really get that thin up there at the top. There's a hill down on the back side of that as you go down towards Webster Pass. And it's very steep. And it can get a little slidey in the, 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 the rocks. But like I said, it's kind of gullied, so it doesn't really hit you that hard. So it's gorgeous, though. It, it was a I wasn't quite prepared for how pretty it was going to be. Yeah, I mean, I imagine like in, you know, golden hour, if you can yeah. possibly make it down before the sun sets, like that. Oh, is just yeah. Perfect unbelievable and, it, and it's one way so once you get to this place you can't turn oh, no around shit. 
yeah, once you get to the the previous summit uh, where you saw me kind of kind of the front of the vehicle, excuse me, um, you can only go one way from that direction. Huh. And okay. it started to hail when we got up to the top of that red cone part there. The basically the very top up there. Oh. That's uh that's something. Hail yeah, is always it was, a, a good, it's good for a quick. Oh, there you go. You can see the backside of it from that picture. Yeah. So it's just that's the back side. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is. So where would you rate so. that on your on your Colorado must do for anybody who's not anybody who's oh, not on a it's right up there a JK on thirty sevens. You know, you can know you can easily do this in 35s. You can probably do this in 33s. Um, there's a lot of optional lines. The The majority of the difficult parts of Red Cone are on the ascent and well before the edge of the timber line. And after that, it's all just kind of this relatively easy rock and gravel. The There's a lot of ruts underneath where the snow kind of gets hung up, where people kind of get up into where it's, they they close it for part of the year, but there's still a lot of water damage and from years of damage. And mm-hmm. so yeah, I, I think it's rated a you know somewhere in the middle of four or five, um, and I wouldn't rate it any higher or harder than that. Okay. It really wasn't that difficult. Um, mm-hmm. I Argentine Pass is kind of that three and the four five range, and this is where I'd put it. It's, it's very similar to, uh, but if you're Part of the reason why I say it's similar to the Ure, it's a lot easier to get to. It's a lot closer to Denver. Okay. Uh, this is, you know, right off of 70, you know, within, you know, trailheads within 20, 25 minutes of 70. Mm-hmm. Max, like it's not even that. I think it, that's probably way too much. That's great. Um, but yeah, and you, once you get up there, you, there's a whole uh, network of trails. Webster Pass runs in two directions. One to this little weird town called Montezuma in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then... The other direction will take you back towards Bailey in Colorado. So, and everything in between. There's all kinds of trails and lots of weird stuff to check out. So it's a lot of it. Red Cone's one of the ones that I'm. I was really upset it took me as long to do because now it's just it's going to be part of my yearly rotation. Really? Okay, that's interesting and good to know as I plan a trip west for sometime this year, probably end of summer. Ross, yeah. highly recommend getting this one. Like it's right. It's right in the middle of everything. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm it's looking an easy at... day trip. So if you're trying um, to get rid of your family for a while, and you want to get up to, uh, you know, be like, I'm going to hang off a cliff for a while. See you guys in 12 hours. Yeah, that's yeah. this is. It's a great way to do it if um, you're spending any time right along the highway there. You're all, hey, you're also spot on. It's a uh, your your boy Ryan at Trails Off Road rates it at five with a six on the optional difficulty level. That sounds about right. Um, Ryan man, would know. He's pretty good. He's it's got a pretty good G2. So close to Denver. <laughs> it's crazy. Like my I I'm sure when you were on last, I told you my best friend lives in Denver. And actually, last time he, we talked, he had a Tacoma on like lifted with standard shit. Now he's got a TRD Rock Warrior Tundra. I wonder if I could steal his truck. I mean, you can get away with a lot of with the Tundra. Yeah. Hey Pat, I'm not telling you I'm doing this with it, but I'm gonna we're gonna do this. Um, yeah, that is <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that is that is so cool. So, yeah, don't do Saxon in your friend's truck. No, no, we did. Um, we did not Silf. Uh, Switzerland passed in his Tacoma. Okay. Uh, All right, well then, which he should was, be okay. He should be okay. Most we did it in like two feet of snow. It was oh, it, it was like the first week of April. It was a shit show. Okay. Um, <laughs> He drove for the first like probably half mile, and we it was me, him, and my wife, and we were kind of like, "This is gonna be fine, right?" And then it got to the point of we're either going forward or we're you know backing yeah. up a half mile. Um, There's um that is so I'm gonna have the guys from Colorado Rescue on, and they are that is one of the biggest uh, rescue spots in the early spring. Switzerland trail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because people try to get out a little too early. Dude, like one of the prettiest things I've ever seen in my life is is that, that trail, given I haven't done Red Cone or Saxon or anything, but Well no, but that's the thing is, is there's so, so much scenic. of it here, it's hard. Yeah, it's it's I am all for the scenic. Like I'll I'll do and we've talked about that before. Like 
I'm very much a scenic person. Um, when it comes to trails, I will do a rough trail if it means getting to a really cool spot. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who's just going to do an out and back that doesn't have anything good on it, you know, to, to see just for the option yep. to do something that might break my Jeep. I, uh, I can do that on my own. I use the word payoff a lot when it comes to stuff like that. There you go. Yep. You know, that's like, exactly it. Actually, I use it more in hiking than in off-roading. <laughs> like, I'm game I for mean, a fucking gnarly hike, like a total rock scramble, if there's an awesome payoff. But if you have okay, to yeah. work your ass off for, you know, three hours each way to, to you know, stare at the side of a like tree no but yeah like, or yeah. to stare at a rock face then and a bunch of other trees yeah, yeah. exactly but if you get and then that's, that's the same view. thing for off-roading though yeah. i mean i wouldn't have wanted to replace an axle if i'd spent the whole day you know just doing some podunk trail that just went to nowhere so a, a democrat's not the greatest but it was decent <laughs> yeah well i mean you could do trust me man you can do far worse for there to be a, a place for that kind of catastrophic failure yeah that's engineer that's engineer. Yeah. That looks like um, I was just uh, was watching or reading. I can't remember. It, was, it looks like the uh, the Bolivian Death Road. <laughs> A uh, cliff bit. road. Oh, yeah. Like shelf death, <laughs> you know. Yeah, this is the one portion of this trail that's really like that that I remember. So, I, but I remember there not there wasn't another soul in sight as I was able to stop in the middle of the shelf road and run back and take that photo. That's cool. Yeah, it's, a, I, there's it's a such a good stock. photo. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It, just, yeah, it that shows was just team, the drop-off. <laughs> <Yeah. Crazy. laughs> my wife hates pictures like that because A, she hates being on those trails. And then <sighs> if she sees stuff like that, she's just like, why? Why would you show that stuff to me? You, mm -hmm. you know I don't want to see it. I don't want to see any of it. <laughs> and she's I'm sitting actually, passenger there too. So she probably loved it. <laughs> No, she wasn't there for oh, that she trip. Oh, she wouldn't yeah. did that do with me. No, no, no. Ah. She wouldn't go. She didn't do Saxon with me. No, she wouldn't do that noise. No, no red shoes. No. She's like, I'm not even liking your post. You're on your own. <laughs> yeah, I think she was just like, so your life insurance is in check, right? I just want to make sure. And it covers stupid, right? Just make sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it covers Someone's stupid. <laughs> I'm with, I mean, seriously. <laughs> Sorry, Ross. That is a I mean, great. Question. I think if we titled our episodes with, you know, some witty yeah, bullshit, does it, cover it stupid would, would be. It would be, <laughs> it would be. Does life insurance cover stupid? Yeah. I mean, hey man, stupid is where actually, the most. I think fun it's a happens. great name for a podcast. Don't nobody steal that. I like it. Yeah. 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 Does um, it? We'll just call it. Does it cover stupid? That's the new does show. It cover stupid. Does it cover stupid? It's yeah. like, are you garbage? But for adventures <laughs> exactly uh yeah click on the one uh the link i sent you the colorado high country one i think yeah. that's the let me double check that's the one i sent you oh that one's an hour long oh is that still the same run that's still red uh, it's quick to point out that the lowest it clicked the red count again the lowest yeah, elevation in colorado is 3300 feet which is higher than most states yeah all right. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the uh, the North Fork Swan. The last bullet point there. I <laughs> the one I'm Got about. it. Yep. So this one, this is in that same general area, Ross. If you're looking for stuff to do, it's even easier. This one would be one I would recommend for family. Okay. Like it's um, it's a it's very high country. So you're up at you know twelve thousand feet or mm -hmm. so or more, but it's very flat on either side of you. There's not a whole lot okay. of drop off or steep drop off in either um, direction. It's okay. one of the be most beautiful things I've ever like. We managed. You were talking about Golden Hour, yeah. And we we hit this trail. Me and Trent hit this trail at the end of our day, on our way out. And you again, you dropped down this little town called Montezuma, and the sun was coming down, and it was setting, and it was friggin' amazing. Um, but this is like that. God I can't even fucking with it. damn. Yeah. Exactly, uh, but that's twelve thousand feet. <laughs> that's that's about twelve thousand feet, right yeah. about there. I think, yeah, somewhere around there. Okay, so, so. I'll t I'll talk my my three selfish points here. First, yep. my daughter is not even; she's just over a year and a half, so she's not coming on this trip. Second, this is a okay. trip that I'm doing by myself. Third, I'm tapping into you as a potential tour guide. So. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, come on up, yeah, dude. I should have a jeep by then. I'll take you. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll do Sure, I will. If anybody calls me and asks me to do any of these trails, I will. The chances I will do these trails because I, 
Jen doesn't like doing the, the altitude stuff. So I also, I need another excuse to go out there and do it. So hey, I, this person's coming into our town. Yeah. It's gone. And she, she, she'll never, she'll never listen to this. So I know I'm safe. <laughs> safe. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a rare day when our significant others listen. To she doesn't listen to mine. Yeah, listen, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Sam, if you're listening to this and oh no, she can probably hear me. If you're listening to this, send me <laughs> you're the word. You're going to called out either way. <laughs> send me the word you. potatoes with no context. Uh, <laughs> so what have you been uh, yeah, driving? Yeah, that's about the sketchiest plot there. I haven't been, I've been driving my wife's Camaro oh. and um, my mother-in-law's uh, 1997 uh, Saturn, Saturn hatchback. Oh, that's amazing. Saturn. Saturn. It's still running. God, do you oh, it's got 80,000 miles on it, man. Like they, they take Gosh. care of it. Like it's nobody's business. It's like a driving a, a, a lawnmower down the highway. Like <laughs> the, the highway here is 75 miles an hour, guys. And yeah. it's 40 miles to the office. So it's just me in the right lane by myself in the semis. Hells each way. God damn. I, I, yeah. That's. Oh, brutal. that's nothing. I, I did. And that's, it only takes me 40 minutes. I used to drive uh, 45 minutes to an hour in traffic. And this is a straight shot to and from. So okay. it's actually pretty nice with the wife's Camaro. I hate driving it, but it is fast. What, it uh, is very, very fast. What era Camaro is it? It's a 2013 RS. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They get the job done. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not, uh, she's not blowing the doors off anybody, but it's doing the work yeah. and it's paid off. So it's even better. Mm, much better. Um, so dare we ask yeah. what, what your actual job is? It's so weird. We talk about off road stuff with so many people and then <laughs> like Chris and I work in marketing, you know, it's like we have this yeah, no. boring bullshit. Uh, I, yeah, I work in cable TV. Okay. I work for uh, one of the big three up here, and they're all in Colorado. So mm. uh, I'll just, that way, that could be nice and ambiguous that way. Yep. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's relatively decent. I I enjoy it. They they're actually the ones who brought me out here in 2015 uh, from Illinois okay. uh, when I was working for from a little Illinois. MSO cable company. Yeah, I, I didn't. I thought I told you that. I mean, uh, maybe I. I got a, the Chicago tattoo and everything. Oh wow! Um, oh, poor yeah, guy. I mean, <laughs> hey. Hey, I got out. I made it. Look at me. You I made the Black it. Uh, Wendy, my, my Wendy <laughs> was we have stuff. Off there. I, I love Illinois. I will always love Illinois. I will always love Chicago. Um, but my, my mom passed away and I got laid off and I was just like, all right, well, here we go. Let's do this. Let's just go. Wow. So hey, good for you. It's yeah, it worked out. It really, really worked out. Like I, I wouldn't be doing all this stuff with all the rest of it, with the Jeep and everything else. If I hadn't, if that, if those events had not, led that way mm-hmm. so yeah i like i did uh i did 40 it was a 45 minute commute from uh suburb to suburb so it was elgin to naperville and back every day it was a pain in the ass i hated it so yeah well same uh, amount yeah. of snow <laughs> yeah but it melts here and it doesn't turn into gray yeah uh, the gray slush yeah. so we got nine inches of snow here on saturday and it's almost Two thirds of the way gone, so it'll be it'll probably be gone by Wednesday or Thursday this week. Dude, that's wild. Because when we had that deep freeze, we got about four to five inches here in Kansas City. Which again, like my driveway faces north, so I have to shovel it always. Um, but it hung around for I think just last week is when the snow finally melted. Yeah, dude. But like, you also were basically like the tundra for three weeks you know <laughs> yeah it was uh, driving to a wrestling event and looking at the uh, thermostat read negative eight in the morning was not mm-hmm. and being excited That's when it the... hit 11 on the way home like positive 11 yeah. and we were like woohoo no, I, don't want that. I don't want that yeah. um, oh and it, like it'll be 50 here but you know uh so we're at seven thousand feet here rampart range uh, is about 10 minutes from the house here and it runs all, it basically runs from garden of the gods in Colorado Springs to a town called Sedalia. And uh, it's, it, you know, it's at 9,000 feet. It's at its max there or so. And the weather is hundred percent different up there and it's 15 minutes away or half an hour away. If you take a little trail, it's mm-hmm. near this house. Um, and it's, but it, like it can be, it'll be 32 degrees and nice and sunny and melty, but man, that sun goes down and it is ice. Deadly. Yeah. Once the sun goes down like, behind, I won't mountain, do it. It's yeah. It, anywhere, anywhere doesn't matter. If yeah. you're hiking, yeah. you're in a truck. You know. 
Oh, in our living room here. It just the sun goes down and the, the temperature in the room drops 10 degrees. And I'm just like, well, it's time to you're, close the doors. And You're affected by it quite a bit more at 7,000 feet than than me at which google tells me it's looking at before is 150 feet above sea level there you go you know? see yeah exactly yeah. by the Little way it takes some getting used to uh so if you're going to come do this i i do highly recommend the the yeah. boost thing you know, <laughs> the boost so oxygen <laughs> the, the few times i've i've been to denver and like i hiked at 10 the first time i was there and i have pretty bad asthma like i was fine really yeah all right then you're good to go bro yeah it's probably it is probably because you have bad asthma you struggled your whole life to <laughs> to breathe and your body has gotten used to operating yeah. at a lower level of oxygen probably probably well, i would also or, say like less humidity and actual clean air at ten thousand feet air. than what you're used to being as close to the city and all of the stuff that you have over there yeah. yeah yeah i hate to tell you that too or just, we, once we got away from the city it made a big difference you know i was also young and lucky back then so that was probably yeah, yeah. i did all of my 14ers in my 20s oh. dude i get it yeah <laughs> I, wouldn't even think about that. I did all of my 14ers never and they're never they're not gonna happen <laughs> i i thought about it for about uh, 10 minutes when i first moved here and then walked up a hill in castle rock and i was like no i'm not doing that yeah. <laughs> what's the like where's that breaking point between like i'm seeing extra cool shit but like I'm just checking a box. Like the difference in what you see between twelve and fourteen can't be the difference between twelve and six, you know? Like it's a huge, huge twelve and fourteen thousand feet? Yeah. Or what like, are you talking about? Yeah. It, it, you, I'm sure you can No. As soon as you break that timber line and, and as soon as you kinda have well, I mean, as soon as you break the timber line, that's usually when scenery opens up just because you, yeah. you can see to your left and the right of you um, it, that, you know, the tens and the twelves, the 12,000 feet, that's when you start to get into like the multiple mountain ranges that you can see out, mm. you know, in front of you. And that that shit's just mm. ridiculous. Like I remember standing on that tripping uh, again, that Jeep was stock in that picture from engineer. And I remember standing at lookout point, which is that kind of midway point along there where you it's supposed to be the Coors Light can. Um, I think it's supposed to be this mountain range. Mm -hmm. And do um, you just you see a mountain range stacked up behind a mountain range stacked up behind a mountain range, and you're just up there and just like I, this is ridiculous. So yeah, it does change a little bit. So like what I always tell people, if if you don't have the balls, then go to go just above the timberline, check it out, get back down. Mm -hmm. But if, if you can stomach it, go just that extra, uh, you know, a thousand feet so that you can see over that other mountain range or at least through it, it'll make all the difference for you in that memory. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was watching Long Way Up recently and like what they saw at 14,000 feet looked awesome and everybody was dying, but it didn't look much more awesome than 12, you know, like enjoyment is actually kind of important for the stuff that we're doing. You know, this isn't yeah. life or death. We have to actually come out the backside of things and <laughs> say, Hey, it was worth it. Well, yeah. And be like, I, I'm getting well, and satisfaction the, and, from it. Right. And there's a principal difference between like hiking and, you know, doing it on, um, you know, doing it behind a, a wheel of any kind of a motorized vehicle. I mean, it's, I'm much more likely to try to ascend another thousand feet if I don't have to climb it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But so I think that we're, wherever that, that line is, wherever that Delta is, it's a little bit different based on what your mode of recreation is. A hundred percent. But yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah. And R Ross, like, I, I mean, will say just... standing on top of a 14 er and being the tallest thing around, like when I did longs, like you can look in any direction, you are the tallest mountain around. That's kind of yeah. rad. But what I will say about it was a miserable hike to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want I don't want that. Like, I, I know my breaking point for satisfaction. <laughs> uh, so what I would recommend to you, if you want to get as close as you possibly can do Argentine Pass and McClellan Mountain. OK, um, those are the those are the highest trails that you can get to um, within an hour of Denver. Um, and honestly, probably in most roads, uh, with the exception, I think, of Blanca Peak down on the southern side mm -hmm. of Colorado Springs. So, um, oh, what? So, I have been opening these on my 
actual functional computer as you talk about them on the Trails off yes. website. And I actually have all of them already in my favorites. So, <laughs> uh, um, yeah. I, I, yeah, I so hope you you're, go. I hope you're serious about that uh, offer to revisit uh, dude, this one. You don't even have to ask me. I will do this one all day, every day. Um, in fact, okay. I will even, if you want, I will arrange, I can probably arrange with the guy who owns a place up there called the Tundra hut. Uh, we can stop and uh, use their grill and cool. uh, stuff for Fuck. lunch. Let's do it. Yeah. If you want to stay at 11,000 feet, man, that's the place to do it too. Uh, we tried to do it and my wife couldn't breathe. So we didn't stay. Yeah. Chris, uh, Chris, you and your family had a very bad time staying at, uh, at, what we was were that? In, we were at 10. We were over 10, 10 in Bragg. Yeah. And so, well, no, that was the one in March was St. Mary's Glacier above Idaho Springs. And that was over 10. And that was like just a house. And that was when we figured out, all right, we cannot stay above 10. Mm. If it's nine, for whatever reason, totally fine. Every, all six of us. But like, it's the point now where I am actually the one who's affected the most by the altitude. The kids are like hit or miss, but it really messes with me now. Yeah. Which is hilarious because I'm the one who's been the one running all over the mountains when I was younger. Like it's should have seen it coming. I had an uncle who who eventually got to that point too, but Jeez. just me. Yeah. So um, let me show you this real quick, man. Uh, so yeah. I haven't I haven't posted this just yet, but this image here. Say, I, I recognize WordPress when I see it. There you go, man. Hey, I've been, <laughs> I've gotten very good at this oh, recently. Yes. I feel very proud of myself. <laughs> as a steep learning curve man i didn't uh i got there um so one of the things they let you do is do this uh split picture oh it's awesome so the slider this will bird does that on universe he does that with like trunk open trunk closed (laughs) (laughs) uh so this is the argentine central uh, railway excuse me and the summit of mcclellan mountain and these are these all every last one of these people is wearing a dress or a suit. Um, there are some ridiculous pictures that I found while I was doing some of the research for this stuff. Is that? But this is that same spot a hundred years, more than a hundred years later. That's awesome. Yeah, you can still climb wait, up there. Scroll. Oh man. Okay. Uh, people listening need to actually put eyes on this. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. You can you can either check in the show or uh, by the time this Shit. is aired, it will be on our blog. So um, yeah. This this was. It, I want to go back and get the exact same spot. Uh, which I need to do. I'll probably do this sometime this summer, but it is the same spot where these pictures are taken. It's the same hill. That's fucking crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really. But it was a tourist train. Um, they did a yeah. lot of it. Did it brought ore and stuff down, but it was largely a tourist train. Mm. So, yeah, crazy. That's so cool. Um, what uh, before we end up talking about, you know, everything greater Denver area and 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 off road in general for. The next three hours because um, i would mm-hmm. yeah i'm totally pending, okay <laughs> pending assuming you gotta uh, edit this and planning for yeah. the for the yellow jk to be back in your possession sooner rather than later what do you have <laughs> at least hopefully locked and loaded um for 24 what kind of trips well, so with dates, um, I've got Vegas on the calendar. So we're we're headed to Vegas to do a week there. And we <clears> spend, <throat> we typically spend a week there. And then we'll do uh, th- four days of it, you know, running around hotels and casinos. And then um, I'll try to find two or two and a half days where we're out and about on trails. So okay. uh, last time I did that, I managed to get myself into some trouble. And I don't want to do that again. So uh, I, I got be, a guy for you. It's very wet in Vegas. Yep. Yeah, did you gotta, meet the guys from Snore? No, I, I, the Rogue Overland yeah. guys are all Vegas based too. So I'll, I got some contacts. Oh, for cool! You. <laughs> uh, oh, awesome! I, I involuntarily met the guys from Snore, uh, which is the okay. Southern right. Nevada yeah. off road recovery guys. Yeah, they're which are great guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you. Which um, some of the Rogue guys might have been a part of that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite, it's entirely possible. Sounds like they've been um, the same trail, same time. Yeah, and that's a story that has a statute of limitations. Um, so <laughs> the so in the next three to five years, we'll hear. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah exactly. I, I gotta I have to check out check your local listings. Um, so yeah, I've got that. I'm gonna do. Um, I want to do Arizona probably in April, and then this summer. Oy, um, this summer I'm going to hit it hard uh, because I did all of those updates for the 
Jeep or for the Trails Off Road stuff this last season, I will uh, be spending pretty much all of this coming season exploring new stuff. Cool. We introduced something called Scout Routes on the site a few years ago, so it makes it a lot easier for me to get into an area and, and do, you know, scout out eight or ten trails as opposed to doing two to three full write-ups. Mm -hmm. And then we can go back later if people are like, this one is really cool. We should do a full, I need a full write-up for this one. Mm -hmm. So um, so I, I want to spend some time around, uh, not Grand Junction, but kind of in between there and Glenwood Canyon. Uh, there's a lot of trails back there that are just you never hear of, uh, but the map just lights up when I pull up um, some of our, some of the stuff that I used to research on. And I, I want to check it out. I want to get some eyes on the ground because every time we put eyes on ground on some of those trails, they turn out really cool. Mm -hmm. So I just want to see them. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then later this year, um, we've got Overland Expo. We'll be here in, in Loveland in October, I think, or August. This is August normally. Can't Really? It's August, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. October is normally uh, Virginia. Sorry. Okay, yeah. when in August is it? Typically uh, third know, week, Ross. Yeah. It's like 20, is that, it's wait, normally wait, like... Is that, is that for Arizona or for Colorado? For Colorado. Okay. That yeah. is uh, not inconsistent with when I was looking at being out there. It's the well, 23rd go, through the 25th, Ross, of August. And everybody's going to be up and leveling. They're not going to be down by uh, where we'd go. Yeah, but that's... Yeah, you'd um, be by yourselves on the trails because every, literally everybody's hanging out everybody, and Everybody's at the expo okay. at that point. So, And I, I only want to spend one day hmm. at the show. So yeah. as, as much I, as I... I-25 South it, out of Loveland is hilarious when that show closes. <laughs> the amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> I I just wait. Um, typically, if, if I'm there... Um, we, at least an hour before the show closes, then I just stay for at least an hour mm. after. There's no point. Yeah. yeah. Like you may as well not. So plus if you stay around long enough, uh, pro tip, stay yeah. around till the, after the end of the show on the last day and vendors don't want to take their stuff home. So, so some of them just really great throw coolers. it at you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's good stuff. So, uh, as far as what else happens for the rest of the year, um, I'm going to hopefully play some audibles and pick up some cool trips here and there. Um, the, I did some research on the Oahis and me and my wife are working on probably going to make a trip out there before it gets too cold, but while it's not too hot either. So the where, 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 where in the country Idaho. is that? Idaho. Idaho. Okay. Excuse me. Idaho. Yeah. She, yeah, she wants to do Arizona cause she grew, she spent a lot of time there growing up and then Idaho just has a bunch of really great, like backcountry looking routes mm -hmm. and. Uh, it kind of looks like a mixture of Colorado desert and it's really lush in some places. Mm -hmm. There you go. It, like, and I, I think that's the dude's video that made me want to go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried. I'm trying. Yeah. Idaho. There's like New I Zealand mean, like, vibes to that too. Montana. That stuff all seems. Yeah. Like the off-road community has really hit, you know, Places like Colorado and Utah and everything hard, but yeah, that area of the country, you know, like yep, that seems still relatively. And that is, wild. I mean, honestly, that's yeah, and that's why I do. I mean, honestly, that's why I do the stuff with the trails, <laughs> with trails off road because you know all the. <laughs> I know that guy. That's Sorry. amazing. This, yeah, I know that guy. This feels very it. normal to me. It's a cow. Like we have those <laughs> every time I go out. Like, I know. I, uh, <laughs> like I, I love my wife to death, but every time we go out and see a cow in the tree, I'm like, you know, we saw them, right? We, we, we went to Vegas. We saw farms of them, and many of them hamburgers now. And like it's yes. now, these are just wild cows that probably won't be a hamburger. Um, that is and, a huge cloud in the background of that picture. Holy shit! I can hear that. <laughs> Uh, I actually pretty sure uh, shortly after that in that video he talked about some weather coming through. <laughs> um, I would say I just saw it yeah, that's... super dark. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of that in Colorado. Or there, excuse me, there isn't a lot of that in Colorado. Just kind of that wide open, you know, prairie mountain, mm -hmm. if you will, and it it looks gorgeous. So I think it's perfect for you know people who are aren't thrill seekers when it comes to hanging off the side of cliffs. Like I like to do, yeah. but it's great for like a family vacation. It looks perfect. So this is cool. probably what we'll do. Irish looking like just green Maybe. and rolling. How much of that's the color grading though? 
Ah, God, I don't know. There, so, so it's hard to say. Well, there's a problem with media. No, we, know, we know it's not. <laughs> yeah, Irish. yeah, yeah. Um, what's the name? Of, is it? Is it? Man, I don't know if it's Idaho or if it's somewhere else in that area. There's a trail in that vicinity that is supposedly absolutely gnarly, and I. For the life of me. Oh, I'm pretty sure I clicked on it when I was looking that one up. What's that one called, Chris? I can't remember the name of that trail. Did it list, uh, is it listed on there? It, oh, I, it just had Hawaii Canyonlands. That's pro- it's actually probably the Hawaii one that I looked up. Uh, Let me see if I can stop sharing it to a description and see if he's got more. Oh, come. Uh, we'll figure it out as soon as we get off. I, I'll, I'll, I'll call. get it. Man, he's got a list of locations, but I don't have a trail name. It's got Secor Creek, S U C C O R, Leslie Gulch, Juniper Gulch. That's it. Birch Creek no, Ranch. That's it. Leslie Gulch. Leslie Gulch. Leslie okay. Gulch. Yeah, I think it's Leslie Gulch. And I'm not sharing my screen. You guys one. can't see all my recommended YouTube videos. So. Let's see. Here. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll think. Meridian. Yeah. This is exciting radio, guys. Yeah, for for everybody listening, you probably love us more than ever. I was to say my <laughs> my recommended videos are all the story till now videos on that video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I, I envy that guy's ability to to edit a video, man. Oof, dude, dude he I, is I fucking good. He had one the other night that I actually got my wife in, interested in too because it was just <laughs> all of his cinematic drone shots, and it was like two mm-hmm. hours long. To like he nice tells a good music, story, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he tells a good story, and that, that's the thing about him. That's that's why it, it's fun to listen to because it, there's this, the visuals are great, but he just tells a really good story while he's doing it. So yeah, you want to keep watching it. Um, we are. That was probably what almost a year ago that he was on. Uh, six, you guys have him six months ago. Yeah, yeah. Sean was awesome. He more? was nice. really enjoyable to talk to, and I mean, oh yeah, he did. Yeah, he also reached, had a broken I, I Jeep around that time. Busy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, but he's got like three of them, doesn't he? Um, the at the time thing, he only had the one. Okay. There's Maybe this, I'm just like, thinking tire sets. Through line, was, the yeah. last one I saw was the track. This through line with Jeeps about being. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I had so I Morrison. had a talk with. Um, That's it, Morrison Jeep Trail. Sorry, that's what I was thinking. There you about. go. No, Morrison Jeep Trail. I looked that one up. Um, I had a. I talked with a guy from the Philippines doing the Philippine Overland Expo. Like they're essentially just a a jungle, 177 mile long jungle trek, uh, timed jungle trek. And um, oh boy, they. He's like, and I asked him. I asked him. So how many Jeeps do you have in your event? And he's just like two, and out of like. 35 teams or something else like that. And like, so what's the number one vehicle? He's like the Hilux. And I was like, of course it is. Um, like, because to be fair, and I told him to be fair, I wouldn't want a Jeep in a jungle either because mine breaks all the time. I don't want, I don't trust it. And in a place like that, parts availability is the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Chris, I wonder if that's, we, I, we had Marvin from uh, Flex Reaction Rollovers on recently and they were talking about some of those can't Chris, where was that he was talking? He was about talking about the Akuma. Malaysian Rainforest Challenge. That's the one. Okay, yeah. And that sounds it's similar. similar. This is the yes. second year these guys yeah. are doing it. So they're they're real new. Um plus apparently in the Philippines it's super expensive to, you know, get a vehicle and offer a vehicle there. You can't really bring them in for events. Like there's a hmm. there's a whole law about that. Well, they don't have show and, and display. A, nope. And then no, they're trying to fix that apparently. Um and a two liter Jeep will cost you a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Dude, for us, I, we have I kinda... four times as many cylinders <laughs> or twice as many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those moments where I was just like, Oh, that's a big price tag for like, and not like a JL. That's a, that's a JK. God. Oh, so you're not even getting like a yeah, fun so... turbo. No, no. So he, oh, I think he said it had the turbo, okay. but you weren't getting anything newer Just, than the JK. Yeah. yeah. And that's, Man. Right. I mean, what is, what, what is the currency in the Philippines? It's um, probably a Filipino the Philippine, thing. 
It is a Philippine <laughs> a Filipino <laughs> peso. So let's do one hundred thousand <laughs> Philippine pesos to dollars, and it is. Oh no no he that was a hundred thousand dollars English oh. yeah or hundred thousand dollars US yeah yeah, yeah. I'll just no 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 let's not start language. converting that crap into a half a million dollars no, and stuff let's, it's not no. it's not okay. that bad it's bad enough yeah mm-hmm. I am it's bad enough at a hundred thousand for that my yeah. bro I love my Jeep but I wouldn't spend a hundred thousand dollars for it I have <laughs> very few uh, off road vehicles worth of well I might have by now. <laughs> yeah, it was like it accumulated <laughs> over what? the years. Yes, you know <laughs> we're getting both, close. You know what? Thank you for saying it out loud, Chris, because Ross just said it under his breath, <laughs> breath over there, Dude. like he was being slick. No, I, I, did, thought, I did a bunch of maintenance was, the other day, so that's why I'm feeling it. So that's <laughs> my first thought was, how much have I spent on my own truck? And then how much was that 392 press cheap that I had? Uh, it was 95 945 after yeah. options, and that was a 2020. Yeah. It says 2024 on my spreadsheet, but I think it was a 2023 because I don't I don't think it had the new grill or the side airbags. I'm, I swear I'm paying attention. I'm still clicking through this guy's Oregon video, and I feel like every 15 to 30 seconds in his video is a completely mm-hmm. different landscape. Uh huh. It's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie unto itself. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Speaking of movies, and what that makes me think of, looking at the left portion of that, who wants to go to Devil's Tower? And uh, get some close encounter vibes going. Do you know I'm how far there, away Devil's Tower it. is from anything? No. It is not. Is there anything around it? No. It is. So like all the cool stuff in Wyoming or is it Wyoming or Nebraska? I think Wyoming. it's Wyoming. It that's is. What I, that's what I start typing in. <laughs> yeah. All the cool stuff is like northwest side of Wyoming, Ross. It is like the farthest northeast of Wyoming. Hmm. I it it and don't get me wrong, like I it is a m- amazing visual. It is not near anything, and it'll never do Spielberg justice. Actually, seeing it in person, I'm sure, but I think uh, so. You know, the I'll give you a weird place I went to for alien vibes, though. Um, so right before I had the transmission rebuilt under that fantastic Mopar warranty, <laughs> the actually I actually coded on my way to New Mexico for the transmission that I ended up getting replaced. Um, but we went to New Mexico. Uh, we spent a couple of days in Roswell, uh, just kind of putzing around, being weird down there. And um, there are some off-road trails out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of a loose definition of a trail. That's kind of, they're just, you know, Point roads. Shoot roads. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but you, I, and I did write this one up. This is a scout route. So if you're listening and you want to go check it out, um, the road to the UFO alleged UFO landing site and skip site is on the website. Um, and it was fun. I mean, it's just a bunch of holes in the ground and you're like, well, I mean, it could be, mm-hmm. you know, something silly or it just it could just be a hole in the ground. Yeah, speculators. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun, but it, and, you know, it's not, you really can't get into too much trouble, but that was about as close as alien vibes. Uh, it's a weird town though. Like if you, if you want to go check out some weird town, that's, yeah. that's a fun place to, uh, just go walk around and do some people watching. Oh yeah, yeah. We don't we don't talk about yeah. that stuff, but there are some towns and and deep in the woods of Maine or New Hampshire, you get that too. Where like town just has a feel, just yeah. something weird, you know? Yeah. Like uh, the... That's that Montezuma town I was talking about up north. You got to be a little oh, careful really? when you drive through town. Don't don't slow down. Don't stop. Just keep going. It was like twelve residents, and I'm. And I'm sure, I hope none of them are listening, but if you are, please don't. <laughs> it says, okay. I have don't it find me. I Wait. still have it open my, on my other computer because I was going to look at going there. Uh, so the population you said, oh, don't stay in Montezuma. In 2020. Well, and when sorry, I did my, Chris? my image search came up with Montezuma ghost town a lot. It is. It's the same town. There's still 12 okay. people that live there. Year round. It, um, it, it, from, hmm, this isn't going to sound good at all. <laughs> If you go to Google Maps and type it's got stabby in vibes, Montezuma, right? what'd you say? It's got stabby vibes, right? It, it's got stabby. still some eyes vibes. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's got a little like, like yeah. yeah. Montez, I don't think they have a hotel, um, and I wouldn't want to stay there if they did. Um, they, you know, they they keep to themselves mostly, and as long as you don't stop in town or speed through town at forty-five miles an hour, they'll leave you alone too. Oh shit! Um, that's actually so. My best friend has a 
they have like a little ski thing in in Silverthorn, which is uh, quite quite. Yeah, close. it's right down the right down the road. Yeah, you, this is just uh, Montezuma is just a little bit further up uh, to the middle of nowhere. Yeah, uh, Chris, and that's a territory you're familiar with too. So yeah, it's over I drive by past a number of ski resorts in Keystone mm-hmm. to get here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for those of us that don't ski, it's uh it's in the mountains. <laughs> It's in it's in it's in the middle of Ski Town. Yeah, or it's in the middle of the it's ski like towns. A Basin. Um, yeah, it's like just east of A yeah. Basin. And these are all old, uh, and all the trails around they're all mi- old mining trails. Uh, the last time I was here, I think we were talking about Hunky Dory Trail, and yeah. Hunky Dory runs right out of Montezuma, or hmm. used to run out of Montezuma Trail. Uh, town of Montezuma. All the all the Let's hotels see. listed for it are actually over by Keystone. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not far. Exactly. I mean, I'm on no. Google Maps. It's a mile and a half, two miles as a bird flies most. Uh, but there yeah. is no there's no cell phone coverage in Montezuma though. Hmm. Town town does give stabby vibes, like based on the Google Maps photos. Like, just just don't slow down. Don't don't stay. They they don't. I think they've reached the the place with the Jeep and the off-road crowd in general where they're like, look, if you guys just, if you don't tear through our town, if you don't, you know, hang out in our town and, you know, cause a ruckus, then we'll leave you alone. Yeah. But otherwise, look, Idaho Springs is uh, near there in, in that general <laughs> area. And I will never forget the first or second summer that we were here and we were coming back from a trail near, it's probably Argentina or something nearby. And some dude came out like, and this is a regular like town. Like there's, you know, 45 yeah. houses on each side of the street. And this dude shirtless just comes running out of his house, screaming at me. And I don't know what he was yelling to this day. And I don't care. All I know is that I kept driving and I'm like, that's why we don't stop in these little towns. You just don't, don't do it. Which, Idaho Springs is a food. legit city. Like there's a safe way. Like there's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very like weird just, safe way. Was just, yeah, yeah. I think he just had that. He had enough that day. Whatever I, for some reason, my Jeep was the source of his ire mm-hmm. and he wanted to take it out on me. It sounds mm-hmm. like you experienced a close encounter with Colorado's version of Florida man. That sounds about <laughs> right. I, yeah. I, you know what? If, if, if oh Colorado God. had a Florida, it would be Idaho Springs. <laughs> like that is, I feel like we're a Denver right. area. I'm going to tell my wife that yeah. in a little bit, and she's going yeah. to absolutely agree with you. So, I can, if yeah. anybody is listening in Idaho Springs, um, and I know some people who live in Evergreen, which is nearby there, and they know, yeah, they all know, they all yeah. know, and they're I think aware. they're all shaking yeah. their head right yeah. now. Yep, they're like, yeah, that's it's a weird spot to stop for a beer. Mm-hmm. That's funny. The, so. Speaking of beer, there there is a brewery. Was it eastbound or westbound and down tap room or whatever? Like that's actually yes. decent food and that's good. But like in the I daylight, think Bose is in there too. Yeah, yes. Bose. Uh, that's the Bose pizza, pizza place. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it's not that even amazing. close to where Smokey and the Bandit was. Not even close. I, no, I said westbound and down, but not yeah. eastbound. Westbound. Regar- <laughs> the, the, As in what? westbound I seventy and yes. down. Get it? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, you know it. Sometimes you got to explain it to the folks who live in the flatland, but, oh, but there's, there's areas of, the, of our state that go yeah, up and down. Us lowlanders, so. yeah. yeah. It's, uh, so I, I will say there is an Instagram account called I Seventy Things that I yes. absolutely enjoy the shit out of. <laughs> he, I, yeah, he's gotten very, he's gotten nationally popular in the last year, or so it's been kind of awesome to watch because there's some weird shit that happens here, man. Like it's I. One of the things I was talking about recently was somebody about like advocacy stuff. We were talking about, you know, I keep getting told that there's all these, you know, wild goats on these off-road trails. And I'm like, I never see goats on off-road trails ever, Mm -hmm. but I have seen goats every single time I've gone to Georgetown (laughs) and and like not, not in Georgetown on my way to Georgetown, like on the side of the highway, just watching, you know, cars doing 70 miles an hour past it. It just doesn't care. And like coincidence. Yeah. I'm just just telling you there's more, there's more goats on the highway than there are on these off-road trails. I mean, they're big horn sheep. They're not goats, but I got close. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) 
getting late in my day. No, no, I, I that was wasn't a judgment on you. That was a judgment on what I could Google fast enough. That was yeah. not a judgment on oh, you. Oh, so. oh, so you're you're not even pulling from a source of knowledge. You're just no. Okay. <laughs> I was on I seventy yeah. things Instagram page, and I was like, wait, uh, mammals. <laughs> yeah, now, there are some cool places you can stop Roadside. in Georgetown. There's a there's a viewing center. You can see them. They're usually out there someplace. Um, yeah, the only other cool thing that I did that I should tell you guys about was the ice thing, and then I, I sent you a link for that. Yeah, um, it's the Georgetown ice racing one. So I think it was in your you drone do... shot earlier. It was. <laughs> it was. I saw that, and I was like, I'm gonna bring that up later. Well, I'll, bring, I'll bring it up. Yeah. I don't care. Um, so before people freak out, it's uh, the lake. When they do this, it's two feet deep. Yeah, I think the minimum depth has to be like 18 inches. And then they go to an extra six inches for safety. And then they roll like, I think, uh, 30 or 40 cars out there at any given time. And then you could just, uh, there's races. Mm -hmm. There's the, you know, straight up, you know, you timed races. And then there is the just kind of a free run, which is what I was doing here. We just kind of line up with these cars. And as each person gets to the line, you just kind of barrel gun it. You know, one person goes and then the other person goes mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you know, left or right. And then you just have, you know, spend a couple hours spinning out and uh, running around the uh, top of that lake. That's and, pretty cool. uh, it's, yeah. it's gorgeous. Is that in the same? I like, I like that they have or... staging for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a safety thing. They're trying to keep it, you know, legit. They don't want people running into each other out there. So, um, the, cause I'm sure I think they started doing this free, like this free part of it a few years ago, or at least opening it up to more people. They do all kinds like during the week, uh, the state brings people out here to learn how to drive on ice. Mm -hmm. Like you can drive a passenger car down that hill there and out onto the lake. Uh, but it's, it's so much fun. Uh, I tried to do a scout route for it. And, uh, so for the, for trails off road. And, uh, so I, I, I don't think I can pull it up in time, but I, it's essentially just a GPX track over the lake and <laughs> I cleaned it up. <laughs> What's the disclaimer on, uh, on seasonal I, use for that? <laughs> we talked about it. We talked about it and we're like, you know what? Like I, as much as I would love to publish it, I think we'll just do a blog post about it because I'm like, somebody's going to drive there because there's a, yeah. you know, they just put a gate up in the summer and someone's going to drive their crap into the water oh and then we're going to have to explain it. That's uh, one of the so, yeah, first it's... episodes of The Office where he GPSs himself straight into the lake. And I, I really wish that it wasn't something that we had to worry about, yeah. but it's just one of those things where I, just, I don't want to be an office the episode. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Trails off road. Don't want anything to do with that. We have a lawyer, guys. We don't. We, we don't want to have the kind of money the for lawyers. Singular yeah, we have yeah. lawyers <laughs> behind. Who's Dude, that's, that's a vintage. Work, that's a vintage Top Gear UK bit too of like the sat nav telling him to drive yep. into the sea, and he's like, "No, I'm yep. not driving into the sea." Like, and then um, there's some idiot next yeah. to him who plows right in. Like. Did you yeah. am I did you run in two or four for that? Um, I actually only ran in two that day because I just wanted to I was really trying to get a good feel for the, for the ice yeah. out there. And I was just trying to get some good sliding video out of it because I'm just like I'm just yeah, I'm I was out there for fun, but I was really kind of out there for video and just kind of out there to experience it because I driven by that so many times when you're driving along on the highway and you see yeah. all those cars out there, you're like, I gotta try that. Like that seems like it'd be fun. And so, uh, so yeah, unnerving. The first time to do it, I've, just like I've yeah, driven by it enough. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I've driven by it enough times, seeing it frozen solid, and never in my mind I went, "I should drive on that." Dude, I drive. <laughs> yeah. I drive past a you can take any kind of car out there. Frozen right? for I'll, three months at a clip, and I'm never crossing my mind to go. Yeah, I'm gonna go walk on that. Like it just doesn't. Uh, it's just a different no. mindset. Georgetown's at nine thousand feet, so it's that you know they stay colder longer, so. Uh, and that's a reservoir too. So the, the water isn't moving, mm. uh, quite so rapidly underneath it. Okay. That's quite a So bit they're able to do that for like two months. Like I, I think they started, uh, two weeks ago, maybe, maybe three weeks ago and they'll run through the end of February until it stops being safe. Hmm. It sounds about right. Uh, yeah. Pull it. Yeah. That's pretty rough. I tried to do it twice last year and then, uh, I just didn't have time. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. I, and I, I don't want to take spots from people that really want to go either. So I'll usually wait until everybody signs up and then I'll throw myself on the back of the list. Uh, Cause now, especially now that I've done it. Uh, but if it's something you, if, if you live in Colorado and you want to you know, slide around on something, man, that's, it's a lot better to go out there and do it than 
than anywhere else here. Yeah. Because it's, it sounds it's like real, a, it gets real dicey real fast. A great thing to take your teenage driver to have experience winter conditions, yeah. like true winter conditions. Well, I don't know if you heard me say that. That's uh, so the state brings up, lets people go out there during the week mm-hmm. as part of a program they have. So you can okay. learn how to drive on ice. Yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily know how well, you know, known that program is. And I'm sure at some point it'll get too busy for them. But if, if you're interested in it, check it out. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm sure, I'm sure they'd let you bring your teenager on there as long as they had a permit. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's be amazing. That's Instead, well, I just use a buddy's yeah, farm. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you've got access to, you're in the middle of Bufu, though, so there is that. Bufu? Actually, well, you're not in the middle of Bufu. No, you're not. What's Bufu? I apologize. I'm unfamiliar with the phrase you're using. What does Bufu mean? Is that an acronym? Bufu? Bumblefuck nowhere? Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm definitely there, but no. <laughs> okay. Most so that's, okay. Most so I'm, Bufu country, yeah. Bufu I'm is a... my parents' way of swearing without swearing. Oh, well, they call it BFE <laughs> around here a lot. Ah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. This is a regional thing, man. Can you, can yeah. you <laughs> explain to the class? Illinois, man. You guys had your own uh, terms. What's, what's BFA? Well, and plus, my, yeah, my dad was from Kentucky, and my mom was from Michigan, so I'm half red, redneck and half hick. So. Urban Dictionary of this. Yeah. What is BFE? It's Bumblefuck bu- Egypt. Yeah. The second one's fuck, and then Egypt is the last one. And so it can be yeah. bumble, it can be butt, it can be anything you want okay. for that B word on the front. Is that culturally inappropriate? Can we still say I'm that? I'm not sure. Um, I, okay. As three bearded white guys, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know what? These days I automatically default to probably not. So. Yeah. Yeah. Should I say this out loud? No. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm uncomfortable talking about it. Uh, I'm leaving it in. I'm leaving it in. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's. It. Let's. Uh, BFE has multiple meanings. Base <laughs> flood elevation, bacterial <laughs> filtration, big freaking explosion. Ooh, I like that one. Beyond freaking Egypt. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, beyond freaking Egypt. Yeah. Uh, uh, bum fucked, bum fucked <laughs> Egypt. Wow. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> We got we we already had the explicit tag. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bum fuck butt fuck Egypt. Oh. Yep. That's the one I'm familiar with. <laughs> is butt fuck in Egypt. That's a mouth <laughs> first one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. Oh. Uh, wow. All right. Okay. Well, if we're not canceled oh. already, then we're. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Way. Well, nobody's listening at this point anyway, Probably. so we're good. <laughs> nice. Technically, we're live, and I don't think anybody's oh. watching right now, so we're good. I even tell people like we're going to be live and then one guy shows up and he's, he's real nice, but it's just one yeah. guy. So, yeah. so um, Norm- normally it's our buddies. <laughs> literally. Hi, Joel. Yeah, there you go. It's usually people. Hi, Joel. Yeah. Uh, Joel, Joel or my friend, John, who talks shit on my suburban cause he has a Yukon and then he bought it and was like, Oh fuck, it's not good. And I was like, well, I tried to tell you, but yeah. Oh, well, hi, John. Can only, Sorry for your loss. Can't warn, you can only warn him so much. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we need to wrap. It's it's late o'clock on it's, the East it's Coast. It's definitely late for um, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jamie, Sorry, speaking of, yep. of your own shit, why don't you plug your podcast since that's a new thing since the last time we did this? Yeah, man. Uh, so because I've been down with no Jeep to drive, uh, in July I started – excuse me, it's since July. In October I started the Trailhead podcast. Uh, I wanted to bring together a bunch of people who uh, – I grew up kind of listening to like the morning zoo kind of radio mm-hmm. shows. One of my favorites, the Bob and Tom show. Uh, and anybody who's listened to a syndicated rock station in the last 20 years has heard them. And uh, it's, it's just a shit show. And I have always enjoyed it. I've always thought it was fun to listen to. And it's the one thing that I didn't find when I was kind of looking for stuff to listen to out here in the off-road podcasting stuff. So I invited a bunch of people that I knew uh, mostly just kind of loosely through Instagram. I didn't want to know people too well. I figured it'd be m- way more fun if we all got to know each other with our audience at the same mm-hmm. time. And that's kind of how it's been going. Uh, we just published our 20th episode nice. and uh, we're doing about, about one a week. Uh, we're, we're just separating our Friday night live shows into a, just a, their, their own thing. They'll just be regular Friday night shows. Uh, we all just get around and drink too much, and then I try to end the podcast before we say something that will get us canceled. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually. So yeah. we, we could have, yes. we should have done that 20 minutes ago here. We should have, <laughs> we should have. Uh, 
My my favorite bit by a stand up is a, a guy named Chad Daniels, and he's like, nobody yep. actually gets canceled. Your audience just shifts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you just a different a different set of audience. <laughs> well, and the thing is, I feel like at this point, our audience already knows us, and we're the shit show people. Right. Like it's, uh, we try to keep a you know a pa- some sort of a semblance to what it is that we're talking about. We did twenty twenty four predictions last week. Kind of went through uh, what AI thought was uh, going to happen this year. That was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes it's just sitting around updating. And then sometimes, uh, we're doing interview shows. Like I did the guy with the guys with the Philippine expo. So, mm, nice. um, yeah, we did a, an episode about Moab when the miles, the 317 miles of trails got yeah, closed. Yeah, we talked with yeah. Ben Burr, um, from the blue ribbon coalition. That was really cool. And, um, so yeah, we'll keep doing that. We'll keep doing the interview stuff. Um, our fans like the, like listening in on the Friday night shows. I, yeah. I gave them shit, but there's more than one person listens on Friday. And, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So we'll keep doing that. Uh, I keep telling my co-hosts that I signed up for a year of our, all of our hosting services. They're, so they're stuck with me for at least that nice. long. So <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. That, I'm a cheapskate. I don't want to. I, I don't want to leave money on the table. So yeah. 100%. I, I feel that like sure that, that, that money is spent. So we will continue to do it while that <laughs> money has been spent. Yeah. Morale will. Con- yeah, we will continue to beat until morale improves. Exactly uh-huh. the same concept. <laughs> the beatings will the continue. Beatings will continue. Yep. The beatings will continue. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we'll keep doing that. Uh, all of our hosts are from different spots. I'm here in Colorado. Uh, Pope and Randy are out in Utah. Uh, Jason and Lily are out in Idaho, Oregon area. And then uh, we have somebody out uh, named Alyssa out in Arizona. We had somebody out in New York, um, but I have, he's, he's just been real busy. Uh, he got real busy right after the stuff happened in October because uh, he's a cop. And so uh, hopefully he'll get to join us back. But yeah, we're we're still looking for somebody else to kind of round out that eastern side of the the country because I just we don't know enough about it. We will all wheel out this way, um, and I want to open that up a mm-hmm. little bit. So, yeah, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. It's been really cool to get to know people and get a better handle of how this works. Yeah. Right, like right. this. Yeah. The first time I did this with you guys, it was painful for me. So I, <laughs> this is a lot. I, have, I feel like I have a lot better handle on my technological stuff. I, I don't have a good one. I just have a better handle. Yeah. On it, so. Right. That I completely yeah. understand. Mm-hmm. I don't know that we're good at this. And it's, yeah. this will be 199 episodes. So I, I don't oh, know. Shit. Damn guys. That's, yeah. that's, I, I hope to have those kinds of numbers and you guys do weekly. So that's, you've been doing this for a bit, yeah, right? We're, we're, uh, we're other trying. than the break for uh, Ross's wife, having a baby. Like about a year and a half ago. It's their rats. Right? Mm. Yeah, rats. Yeah, about about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And good lord, guys. I'm, I mean <laughs> looking who is slated to be recording number two hundred. Oh yeah. Uh Vaughn Gitt- Wait, so I got I Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Lauren Haley. <laughs> Did you, have you just realized that you made uh you have may not have made the two hundredth episode as ceremonial as you might have thought it was gonna be? Uh well it'll be their return to this show it's uh, pretty pretty fucking awesome but you know all right it's it's funny to me ross i don't think you've realized this vaughn was episode 100 really yeah when he was on the first time so he would be if i ever that's awesome all right that's he's technically 201 we're supposed to have an episode between Mm, i know that but yeah I actually, if I record with Matt and them on Saturday, right, they would be two hundred, and then Bob would be, yeah, yeah two hundred one. <laughs> I don't feel important. She can move me around wherever you need to. If you need, if you need, oh, you're to going up Wednesday, shit, homie. Yeah, man. <laughs> Damn it! All right, yeah. all right. I'm gonna it's wrap okay. the show real fast so I can stop yeah, recording. Yeah, I need to go to bed. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's different. So, rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Off the Road Again podcast and Trailhead podcast. Go find them both. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, follow JD. He's at me and my yellow JK on Instagram. There are underscores involved in that, but just search me and my yellow JK on Instagram and it comes up. Like, it's not that it's hard. Not, me yep. and my yellow JK. Easy dot enough. Com, trailheadnetwork.com. Trails Off Road. Easy enough. Right? Trails Off Road. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and Trails Off Road is a 2024 Jeep is going to have the our trails up in the Uconnect system. Nice. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Oh shit, they did a whole press that release on that actually. Very yep. fancy. Yeah, that was that was part of the big yep. uh, 2024. Badge of Honor updates. trails are yeah the badge of honor trails are given with the guide information. 
uh, that'll just be part of the Jeep, and then you can mm-hmm. upgrade the subscription and get everything else loaded in your dash. That's, dude, that's awesome. That's really fucking cool. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty cool. Toyota, take notes. Right, anyway, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We tried. We, we had ours in the Bronco. We had ours in the Ford Bronco. It just didn't get as much traction yeah. as the Jeep. So. Wow. wow. You know what they say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm um, going to let that hang because mm-hmm. I'm not sure what they say. So <laughs> thank, thank you, JD, for joining us. Thanks, JD. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Have a great night.